i welcome you all to today's interactive session on pharma outlook from evolution to revolution i am dr lakshmi professor of chettinad school of pharmaceutical sciences the chettinad group with a legacy of over 60 years in education have been pioneers in providing progressive learning environment across tamil nadu chettinad academy of education deemed to be university in the year 2008 care has been accredited with grade a by nac and accorded with cyro status by dsir our institute offers 60 plus academic programs in different streams like medicine dental nursing allied health science law and architecture chettinad school of pharmaceutical sciences is committed to provide a transformative learning experience in a collaborative and diverse environment with a focus to develop leaders in the discipline of pharmaceutical sciences i feel very proud and happy to welcome our guest sir rnd dr reddy's laboratory usa mr manigandan head rnd granules india hyderabad the serving leaders of pharma industry to this interactive session i would now like to invite to moderate today's session once again i welcome both of you sir welcome to the session yeah thank you yeah thank you thank you ma'am so hello everyone and welcome to this web the revolution on behalf of chettinad school of pharmaceutical sciences and chettinad academy of research and education i am very pleased to welcome the esteem chief guests of the day first let us introduce mr shankar ramakrishnan sir sir i welcome you thank you for being here with us today how much a busy schedule and we'll see his profile now so dr shankar ramalingam got his uh, bachelor's sorry shankar ramakrishnan got his bachelor's degree from dr mg medical university tamil nadu and is m farm in pharmaceutics from naipur mohali and phd in pharmaceutics from punjabi university patiala yes work as a lecturer at ssr college of pharmacy senior research scientist at of novel drug delivery systems group at ranbaxi research laboratories in rnd at orchid chemicals and pharmaceuticals subject matter expert of formulation rnd at dr reddy's laboratories india and he also has been the head of bio studies at dr uh, reddy's laboratories limited india and is currently the director of r&d at dr reddy's laboratories luciana usa he has 10 poster presentations and several research articles and one us patent to his credit we welcome you sir and next we will welcome our next guest mr manigandan ramalingam sir i welcome you and thank you so much for joining us i'm much busy schedule thank you so much sir So, Mr. Manigandan Ramalingam has been the head, is the head of the R and D of Granules India Limited. With over 21 years of experience in providing technical and operational leadership in uniquely challenging positions across the pharmaceutical value chain, he worked at Dr. Reddy's and Sun Pharma prior to functional head in product development and research, subject matter expert for formulation at Dr. Reddy's. He has experience in working on APA design and manufacturing, APA formulation integration, pre-formulation, formulation design, biopharmaceuticals, and regulatory affairs. He was first graduate in pharmaceutical technology from Naipur Mohali and master black belt in yeah. Thank you. So, sir, sir, can we get the speed? Yeah, please go. situation currently so how are the pharmaceutical industries managing the current pandemic situation sir so how are you coping up with it yeah shankar would you like to take it up thank you mani um so uh, good evening to all and uh, you know thank you for this opportunity it's a pleasure to uh, be with uh, a group of uh, um, uh, student faculty from the academics uh, and uh, you know it, it it refreshes our thoughts at the same time it provides an, 
us an opportunity to share my views um, uh, in the forum. Uh, uh, question. Um, if you look at uh, the, I think you're referring to current, uh, the COVID-19 situation. Um, in the overall perspective, um, uh, one of the industry which kind of uh, uh, has a low impact um, with respect to um, maybe the um, the opportunity to do what it is intended to do and opportunity uh, in terms of the business uh, uh, perspectives uh, being uh, essential uh, uh, business uh, we still have not uh, lost that uh, opportunity to uh, continue doing what we are doing and uh, but at the same time um, we do have um, uh, impact with respect to um, the continuous contribution uh, from uh, all our uh, uh, employees or other members who are, are, are even our associates say contractors or, or our, our suppliers uh, in every place, there has been some delays and uh, um, some some kind of non-availability of materials, etc. The only thing uh, that we are hoping and continue to uh, work is that situation would become uh, uh, become normal. But in an overall sense, uh, uh, this is one of the least affected uh, uh, industries, I would say, uh, at least in terms of uh, uh, continuous uh, opportunities. Uh, money, uh, you may you may want to add on this. You know, many of you are having a doubt. How is what is the scope of pharma? You know, out of various industry that exist in the universe, you know, the entire universe is facing this problem. I the big problem. In spite of that, the two places which is continuing to work upon is the, if you see, one is pharma and medicines, another one is the uh, food industry, because uh, which itself tells us that how essential for a human survival. So this itself has been associated with the education, which is one of the integral part of a human being survival you know, across the globe. And coming on to the as uh, how the industry is uh, uh, mulling through the situation is that you know one of the major problem we would be facing is the drug shortages and uh, so as to avoid the drug shortages you know uh, the lot of uh, strategic decision has been taken both uh, technically as well as uh, in terms of uh, procedurally with the help of the governments and uh, support and the operation is continued so we are able to supply all the medicine to all the people who are uh, who are in the ailment. Next is the uh, because it's a value chain, right? From a uh, from a manufacturing till it reaches the patients. Because the entire value chain, whoever is associated, it can be from a uh, starting material. You know, this is from a manufacturing perspective. What I have been speaking aspects. There is a lot of people who got into the both academic as well as industry and started working on vaccines and other basic drug discovery and enable to overcome this pandemic disease and uh, there is another set of industries that you know the cosmetic industries uh, where they are working very very big who is actively involved and there is a huge demand from the uh, that sector as well and everybody is trying how they can formulate and sell hand sanitizers and then in comes of when it comes in the same drug discovery aspects you know lot of nc dis uh, discovery which is under the early or late phase of the discovery research got translated for an clinical trials you know and extend in terms of manufacturing the ventilators and other supportive devices even including from the nose mask face mask aspects so this is how the whole industry got to face this pandemic situation for so as to face this the whole industry need to be agile are able to meet up to the standard and save 
uh, millions of lives. And this is how the pharma industry got uh, you know a huge uh, change in the shift happened in this past three months. Okay, yeah. so let's move on to the next question. I also request all of you to have a piece of a pen and paper, you know, some uh, some concepts, whatever uh, you would like to note it down or when we say that, just note these points. You can very well note it down and it may be of useful some point of the uh, time in your life or career. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. So what are the entries that are available in an industry? Yeah, uh, Shankar, I will take on that. See versus academic credentials. That way, to become a research scientist, what is first and the foremost required is that, you know, you should have the quest to uh, think why and what and how. If you have the natural inborn inquisitiveness, you, you are a born research scientist. And thereafter, you should have an ability to, you could have these two fundamental characteristics, then you may have to develop certain aptitude, I would say that, what are the as well as certain attitude, you know, from an aptitude perspective, you should be in a position to face failures and overcome challenges because it is not a regular job. You plan something, go do it, it is not going to happen. You know, that time you should, if you are a person of highly demotivated, self demotivated, or highly, a, you know, uh, fearful to face challenges, then you would find it very difficult and really frustrating. So you should have, not but the least, you should also have the patience. Uh, it may look too theoretical, but you know, you, until unless you convert this theory into practice, uh, you will not be able to uh, shine as a generalized qualities. It is not necessarily the qualities that is required for a pharma scientist, for that matter, for any scientist to have this quality, then you are a born scientist. This is with respect to the the general characteristics I've spoken. Then with respect to the educational aspects, you know, you should become a literate in the field, whichever you're taking to the highest level in the respective field. So if you have these two things put together, then you can become a very successful scientist, I believe. Shankar. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree uh, um, uh, with you, Mani. The, the last uh, maybe 10 to 20 years in the, in the whole uh, is this particular uh, uh, qualification? Say you have this particular degree, you have um, um, you 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 do this course, and then you you become a scientist and things like that. That is probably the uh, I would say a kind of a colonial thought where uh, people were provided an education to to do a certain work in factory when the industrial revolution has actually started. Now the way uh, the whole uh, world works is totally different. Uh, so it is not the qualification per se. Yes, qualification uh, is a kind of, uh, I would say, an entry point. Uh, we see a lot of uh, 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 people with a PhD in pharmaceutical sciences when they come and then they are not able to kind of do their, the, the, their role. Uh, but at the same time, uh, from a U.S. perspective, if you come and see a lot of um, employees who work here, they do not have a pharmacy degree. They are uh, having some kind of a, uh, some engineering degree and they come and uh, excel a lot in, in, uh, in formulation development. At the same time, you, you go to a microbiologist, they become a kind of a molecular biologist in the drug discovery uh, fields. Uh, pure organic in, um, in, the, in the medicinal chemistry field. So it is a certain orientation, uh, a qualification alignment um, uh, of your basic education, but it all depends on your individual become in that particular uh, field. And often people have the tendency to call, uh, confuse between the call, uh, literacy and education, you know. Whatever the degree you are earning from schools and colleges or you are becoming a literate, you know, does not mean that, you know, you will be successful if you are a literate, you know, you should also need to be educated in the same field through certain characteristics as well as experience so that you can be very successful in your career. So the next question would be like, uh, it is necessary to have uh, interdisciplinary knowledge to sustain in pharma industries. Sir. Yeah. Shankar? Yeah, yes. Um, uh, it's kind of a... Um, 
I would say it's uh, it's uh, uh, as you see. Um, though you are saying that, uh, I think most of you are uh, uh, from the uh, B pharmacy uh, um, uh, course. Uh, as such, if you look at the B pharmacy course, uh, it's a kind of a interdisciplinary uh, course only. You are not like there is nothing like uh, pharmacy is a kind of an applied science. It's not a basic uh, science. You mix uh, mathematics, you you mix some technology aspects, then you mix some um, uh, some chemistry, some biochemistry. Everything put together, you you give a focused education towards a, a discovery and development of drugs. So that itself become a, a kind of a multidisciplinary approach. Having said that, um, what makes um, a kind of uh, um, brings in a success in terms of achieving the objectives is a focused thing the depth in a particular uh, uh, field so unless you have a depth what is required in what you are doing then it is uh, very difficult uh, particular field so in in yes there is a multidisciplinary approaches required you have to learn you have to have some even computers or, or even you know, your programming mathematics statistics to the biology everything but at the same time the moment you whatever big activities spanning your entire uh, career what you are doing it is just even a daily work uh, one hour of uh, of activity you have to have uh, the focus and depth in what you are worthwhile. Otherwise, also we will we will sustain but at the same time. And the teamwork is very essential because not one person knows everything uh, in the world. And um, but a hard fact is um, that uh, you know uh, I don't know everything because we want to know everything and we don't know everything. Uh, but that that situation has to change if you want to be successful and if you want to take uh, the whole uh, situation along the whole uh, society along with you you have to be good at the teamwork you may not get the right people or you may not get the people you like with you but the teamwork is very important the teamwork brings the multidisciplinary approach automatically yeah so to add on to what Shankar is saying, how does it translate into the real world life and how it would help you if you know the interdisciplinary knowledge is that, you know, you will be in a position to empathize and what your colleague is talking. If you have some, if you don't need to have the blame game, so he does not know, he is not doing it properly. In contrary, what you say that, you know, you sit along with the chemist and then, you know, biologist, these two are the major components uh, discovered. And he says that, you know, yeah, I have hit the target. And then, you know, you come back and say that, you know, no, it's not having any activity. Then you both will be in the confrontation mode. On contrary, if you have a little biology knowledge, uh, you will be able to empathize and understand what your colleague is talking. So that, you know, what you may need to correct or what you may need to align with him so that to uh, succeed the project what you have taken. That's what Shankar is mean. The teamwork will get synergized when you have an interdisciplinary knowledge. But at the same time, you may not be an expert in that uh, field, but you can be expert or a more knowledgeable person in the one subject what you have taken. But on contrary, you understand what your friend is talking so that a good synergy will come. So in that aspect, yes, interdisciplinary knowledge is must. I, I, I have another request. Um, uh, you know, I would suggest that if uh, whoever is there in the in this uh, call, if you would like to kind of participate in this discussion, ask some questions as we go along, it will be better. It should not happen that we both sit here and preach everything. Yeah, it becomes a monologue. Sir, so to add on to your view, I will also... Uh, say that lifelong learning is also very essential apart from interdisciplinary knowledge i think even lifelong learning is also very essential yeah. because uh, we need to update our knowledge throughout our career i think that uh, quality is also very much essential yeah there, there is no dispute to the continuous learning actually <laughs> even today I, I try to learn or try to go back to the drawing board and see how to do the second thought onto that. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you, sir.
so can you highlight the impact of artificial intelligence and machine learning in pharma sir artificial see it is in a very emerging field at to best of my no doubt it is going to play a good role how it is going to uh, you know navigate through the field is we have to wait and watch but nevertheless there are a lot of uh, budding examples available help in terms of uh, from a drug disc uh, what do we say that you know uh, unit operations in the manufacturing it is not specific to uh, any one field as it emerges you know for example you can see statistics you know it is not uh, only for pharma right like you know it is for any of the data analysis so the same way pharma has got lot of data so we need to do the lot of data analysis you know similarly the artificial intelligence you know uh, pharma has got a lot of value chain activities you know there are a lot of bouts you know you may need to have a supply chain activity where this may come into bigger picture in terms of a uh, movement of the transactional activity likewise uh, uh, pharma is a multidisciplinary multi people uh, activity oriented uh, profession where if the other profession get all these things imbibed it will definitely translate into its application in the pharma as well one small example i would like to narrate you know for example let's say how do we apply an artificial intelligence uh, earlier we used to measure uh, blending multiple mixtures into a powder form you know today we are talking about how i can blend and not send the sample through all these type of modern techniques watch my blending outcome in the mobile phone so that's where the artificial intelligence comes in place you know on the data collections data earlier in between in this um, the last decade we were focusing mainly on the pat uh, process analytical technology now we want to travel from that to this so that you know you get all the results outcome on to your board so definitely these are whichever uh, emerging uh, where pharma cannot be an exception where they don't apply this stuff yeah you know to to add on to that you know a very basic uh, uh, perspective um how do we human beings uh, uh, work uh, basically we have a very good uh, a very well uh, developed uh, uh, brain as compared to other species in the world um what we basically uh, do is uh, whatever the information uh, we gather we have that extraordinary ability to uh, to store that information and process that information in 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 millions of different ways that we uh, really want and uh, that gives us the superiority over the other species in the world this is again combined with the sort of a imagination or a what do you call it as a creativity so that makes us even more uh, better so that is what uh, we do um, on a daily uh, basis on a on a day to day uh, basis and uh, most of your students when you go and sit in a class every day you are basically gathering information at some point of time you will process and make something uh, creative or, or something which is to to at the same time um if you if you look back 50 years ago uh, we used to write everything on a piece of uh, um, then slowly the uh, computers came in where it could store more what you cannot store here it used to store you just pull up a file and then you see there are a lot of tools that you got in terms of uh, processing the data maybe some statistical tools even even right from your microsoft excel to all the statistical uh, softwares where you feed in a standard algorithms and and it processes that information and gives you you need not work um, uh, so much uh, to towards that and uh, slowly we are going to the high we started our post graduation and things like that i used to get surprised so much to see uh, there are a lot of research articles uh, published on artificial time it used to be that you know it is going to be a big boom and it's going to change the entire uh, world so yes now also the the higher dimension of that the evolved uh, uh, characteristic of that um the artificial intelligence and so many things are going on but at the same time uh it's not a kind of a substitute uh, directly uh, to the to the uh, creativity it has not come to that evolve to that extent that it can completely substitute the creativity aspect of the uh, human mind 
um, it, it is still a long way to go. But, you know, in, in, in 100 years ago, we were all uh, like uh, pulling uh, uh, water uh, from a well using a bucket. Now we have a motor pump switch on and then it, it gives you, it reduces your work. At the same, in, in a similar way that we should use this artificial intelligence, this technological improvements to, to evolve better and uh, make uh, life much easier. Uh, that's what uh, I would like to add. Yeah. So how many of you are uh, able to cope up with our discussion? You know, you have an option in your uh, uh, device to say, raise your hands, you know. Uh, so at least since we are not connecting <laughs> uh, physically. Uh, so uh, now uh, with your permission, I would like to ask uh, Shruti to ask a question. Yes, ma'am. Sir, this was very interesting and this is the first uh, time we are, we are in this uh, situation like we are attending these kind of webinars. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Sir, now I will, uh, I am Shruti, sir. I am going to ask a question. Um, what is the scope for women candidates in pharma industry, sir? Very bright. I would ask uh, Shankar to first take up and I will tell you one small story <laughs> after that. Um, see, there is, uh, I think uh, it is high time uh, that uh, we should uh, stop uh, talking about um, uh, a kind of, a, uh, maybe stop having a, a gender-based uh, uh, discussions or orientation uh, towards anything that we do uh, in our world uh, now. Uh, pharma industry or pharma, pharmaceutical related activities, uh, no exception to that. Um, but yes, uh, from a social perspective, there is a long um, way to go. Uh, uh, but in a, in a practical perspective, what matters on the ground, uh, there is really no difference. Uh, increasingly, there is an adaptation um, uh, of uh, this point uh, in the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, there is the discrimination based on the gender or, or what uh, a particular uh, person belonging to this gender, that gender can do or cannot uh, uh, do or anything. So um, I think uh, when, when these uh, social things become uh, uh, kind of um, uh, better and better, uh, maybe in next few decades, uh, this will become uh, uh, highly uh, irrelevant. Uh, so I, I would, uh, you know, uh, like uh, to request all the people on this call, just, you know, stop thinking about, uh, uh, about this, that, you know, which gender is better, what one gender can do, one gender cannot do. Um, you know, we have all our, our own um, uh, approach, the approach, changes uh, whether you what kind of uh, uh, characteristics uh, uh, you have so uh, uh, you know so it, it will definitely become irrelevant so uh, you can do uh, anything uh, if you're a, if you're a woman uh, you can do anything and everything that uh, a man could do or a man could do anything and everything what a woman could do uh, um, there is no basically no uh, discrimination I think we, we we lost Manik and but overall, uh, you know, I, I I would I would you know I would like to ask you uh, Shruti a question. So because since you you asked this question, what is the the basis behind your your question? Are you are you facing a problem, or are uh, uh, are you being told that uh, women can do certain things or not? Uh, are uh, do they have an opinion that? Uh, uh, that uh, men only can do certain things and women cannot do. Can can uh, some of you speak upon that? No, sir, not uh, like that, sir. In industries, how uh, actually women can uh, handle that missions or whatever? How we can do that? That we could able to do or not? That is our fear, sir. Not we we have we do not have that that much exposure today no sir so we want to know how how it will be 
Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, this, this again goes back to the same um, thing I said, that, you know, it is, we are still not, uh, uh, you know, every day digging on the field uh, to, uh, you know, harvest uh, tablets, uh, organized uh, um, activity, even for that reason, any industry is highly organized. And uh, the dependency on uh, the strength of the muzzle is increasingly down, going down, going down. Uh, there is no uh, doubt about it. And uh, when we are practically in the industry, we do not see that handling the equipment or operating a heavy machinery is uh, uh, very difficult. If you if you um, uh, happen to you know kind of a situation in in uh, where the place the site I work. I, we have like uh, three or four um, uh, women maintenance uh, crew. If you see their age also, they're about uh, 50 in that range, 50s, uh, early or late 50s. The way they handle uh, missions, maintaining missions, it'll be amazing. Again, uh, the, the technology solves most of that, uh, that problems. So please take it off uh, from your mind. You know, nowadays women uh, fly aircrafts and, uh, uh, you know, spaceships. So it, it doesn't really... Okay, sir. So Thank technology, you. Solves, uh, technology solves everything. So you, you, the, the, the need for the muscle uh, is almost nil now and it will continue to uh, go down as we move along. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Yeah, let him, he can uh, join back. So any anybody else has anything, any other uh, views on this? Uh, good evening, sir. I'm Ashlyn. So why is it not a proper vaccine still found for coronavirus, sir? Okay. So, uh, you know, though I'm, I'm uh, not uh, uh, straightly into a, a biologics uh, field, uh, but I would, uh, you know, out of our interest, uh, we would, uh, you know, see that. Um, see anything, um, uh, any activity um, in the world uh, uh, takes time. Uh, you know, I used to hear a, a famous example that uh, everybody talks about E is equal to M element of time. Uh, but uh, what happens uh, is that uh, yes, there is a vaccine uh, which has to be produced. And uh, first of all, the, the, the understanding about the nature of the virus uh, uh, itself uh, takes time. When we say that uh, it's a vaccine, we would have maybe since you, some of you, I'm not, I'm not sure whether all of you are from the first year uh, B pharmacy, right? Or, or you would have uh, studied in your uh, uh, high school or something, how they, you know, typically they give you a procedure, how they... Uh, make the vaccine they 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 infect uh, say they say horses you infect and then extract the blood and separate the antibodies uh, from the blood and then that that's that's what the it becomes as a vaccine things like that but uh, those are all yes the way they started with uh, uh, this kind of a biological therapy uh, they are correct but now uh, the way we have evolved uh, so much and uh, the regulations related to the safety of uh, biological products puts a tremendous stress on the way we uh, do the research. So when we say virus, yes, virus, what is that virus and uh, how does it work? Does it mutate very rapidly? Does it, uh, is, does every strain ch changes? And uh, do all the patients who have that, uh, they have the same strain or not? So those so many things, it takes time. And uh, uh, in the United States or uh, Europe, and I, I heard even China, some companies uh, entered into uh, kind of what is called a phase one trial. So when they when they do that, they 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 kind of first establish they have to establish the safety. Second, all this, the proof of concept uh, requires, um, you know, kind of uh, either you infect a healthy person with the virus and you vaccinate one group, don't vaccinate the other group of volunteers or, or patients. So 
these kind of uh, some risky um, experiments only gives the complete proof of concept anybody can say that yes i have a vaccine uh, you know if i mix the coronavirus with uh, uh, this vaccine there is a kind of a suppression of which replication or anything but these trials uh, take uh, a very very long time but beyond uh, this the way we have progressed in terms of therapeutics or uh, vaccines throughout the world uh, in the last uh, four five months i would say uh, it is kind, kind of 10 times faster as compared to how regularly the this kind of uh, discoveries or invention happen uh, so basically it is the time uh, to under virus and the time it takes to uh, uh, develop and test um, so what we we uh, hear is that uh, in in about uh, uh, 12 to 15 months from now we should uh, have a virus uh, in uh, all probability uh, that's much 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 uh, faster than uh, how typically this uh, vaccine development happens. thank you sir so money and then sir we are waiting for a small story you said to change yeah, sorry, uh, and under which uh, contacts we were talking at that time, hey, I got disconnected. My apologies. Yeah, so, what kind of uh, carrier is uh, good for a woman like? Yeah, I concept? think so. Yeah. Shankar would have taken you through. See, this may not be a very positive uh, uh, example to be considered, but you know, nevertheless, uh, how women have fared well in the historically, you know. You are, since you are all from Tamil Nadu, you would have, how many of you would have heard of Kundavai Nachia? I hope, uh, since we don't have uh, connectivity, many of you would have read or you can go back and look into it, you know. She is the first woman to generate an uh, army type who can act as a self suiciders So, what is the story tells back, like a date back to history, that, you know, women have revolutionized even uh, several years before. So no way, you come, when you compare it, genders, they are inferior. That's what we have to rule out the mind, from our mind, actually. So there is a history which has shown that, you know, for, to threaten the Britishers, she generated an army of people who are self-bombers, uh, self-suiciders, so that they all got afraid and then they ran away to, you know, to occupying that area. That's how she chased the entire people. Now we would have seen our Rajiv Gandhi suicide. He's a woman is a suicide. It's not a very easy job, you know. There are people who have gone to that extreme, which is far, far, uh, you know, difficult for any human being to imagine. That is an epitomic uh, story how women have achieved when they can do such a high level. And uh, this is all uh, nothing. It's a peanut in front of that. That's what I wanted to tell you. So no way. Uh, get inferior for being a woman, you know, it is maybe that, you know, muscular strength differentiates man and woman, but uh, in terms of a job profile, we should find out an appropriate role and then we can uh, sustain well. And more so pharma industry as well as all the industries are coming up with an diversity equalities, you know, which means that, you know, women members should be there on the board. Uh, such a things are coming as a rule. In such a case, they have a tremendous opportunities. That's what I wanted to say. My question was uh, that uh, what are the prospects of uh, doing uh, after B-Farm, completion of B-Farm, getting into MBA? Okay. See, uh, MBA is not, no way uh, uh, inferior course or a superior course. It is another course unlike an M-Farm. Okay. It is about the choice which you are going to make and if you are going to make MBA as a choice and definitely there are a lot of career perspective in terms not only from a marketing and uh, there are other aspects of the management uh, dimensions of their taking a uh, very good prospectives in the form of field program management project management portfolio management like that n number of options are there at that time when you club pharmacy basic science along with the management uh, uh, master science it is a very good combination i would tell you what is the basic you have to look at it is that not the job opportunity where does your interest lies where does your uh, strength or acumen lies if you believe that those areas uh, aligns with that course then it is a beautiful combination i would say that and more so if you could take some 
experience and get into MBA. That's why even in the abroad, um, abroad colleges, they would ask for some experience. Then you become more enlightened about the subject and then you align that with the pharma. So whoever has done a combination of BPOM plus MBA, they are fairly doing great job in the industry, I could say that. So it's a very good combination. It's all about the individual and their choice to uh, sustain and shine. Uh, it will make it success or failure. It is no way the combination is a wonderful combination. Good evening, sir. This is Vivek. Hi, Vivek. As a, as a senior head, how do you balance your work and life, sir? I would leave this question to Shankar. <laughs> Uh, see, it is. It's a you know in 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 today's date, uh, you know, it's not that uh, senior or uh, junior or everything. Um, everybody, irrespective of whether it's a pharma or um, uh, anything, then you know you would have uh, heard about the word uh, corporate world. So it is all uh, corporate world. Uh, there is a, a tremendous amount of expectation from every person uh, who is working in any organization. So as you grow up, uh, probably you do not work uh, on a ground level, but um, you tend to take uh, more responsibility. Uh, the risk of your decisions, uh, uh, the accountability uh, that you take uh, is very high. They, they, uh, they, they cascade into uh, multiple uh, sub consequences. Um, so uh, basically, there has to be a balance. I think uh, in the younger generations, as compared to um, uh, the generation where um, uh, you know myself and Manikandan belong to, we we are probably just four generations earlier. I would say, like I'm just saying that uh, about twenty years generation shift. Uh, we are four uh, generations behind. Uh, there, there, there used to be a period where the it, it all uh, is a, the question of survival. Means you have to survive in the in your job. Uh, you have your responsibilities. You have to fulfill that. That uh, fear of uh, continuous survival creates a, a kind of a stress. That's one kind of a stress that we uh, have. So that, that lets you to do more into work, 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 uh, always work. The second uh, thing that comes is that, uh, you know, it becomes your own interest. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it depends largely on the cultural thing that we are all told that, you know, you have to achieve it, you have to achieve it, you have to do something, you have to become great, you have to become great. So something is registered uh, behind our mind that, yeah, we have to be great. That is the only um, uh, thing to be. So, uh, you know, uh, the fear of uh, protecting that kind of a uh, um, stamp uh, still uh, creates uh, uh, the kind of uh, you get to work, work, work. And uh, the, the situations demand that's the final uh, thing i would say everybody is in a very uh, various situations uh, but uh, but even we work the life is there but i would uh, th there there is a lot of support uh, overall from a business community and uh, society is definitely required um, in my uh, personal view it is there is a still a long long way to go in terms of where you know we create a society where um, especially in india where uh, we have a complete uh, a kind of a work life balance we just work for 8 hours and then uh, go back there are several people who do that if you go to certain section of employees uh, say uh, an, uh, an an operator uh, of a in a pharmaceutical plant, many of the places they would say that, yeah, it's my 10 hours is done, I'm going or it's like that. It all depends on uh, what, uh, where you are at, what you really want to do. Uh, the situations or what you call the luck uh, plays a very uh, uh, greater role. But irrespective of your situation, uh, your ability to uh, understand the priorities in life, um, 
becomes a driving factor whether you really want to balance um, uh, between work and life. There is no particular technique to uh, balance basically. If you have to balance, yes, you have to balance. It's, it's, it's what you put on your uh, uh, priority that's very important than um, uh, what it is. So you, you are all youngsters um, ha are having a situation where, uh, you know, you spend more time with your family, um, your, I mean to say your, your parents or extended uh, family, you spend a lot of time with your friends. Uh, you, you look at yourself, what is your priority? which you like is a different uh, thing what is your priority is a different thing how others perceive is a different thing so it's all uh, individual but i would say that the the, the, the you have to have the, the situation should really help us but you can yourself create that situation uh, if you're smart enough to balance that uh, work and life Thank you, sir. I'm sorry, I'm not sure I'm clear or not, uh, but uh, I think I'm not very clear. This is the, to my ability, I could explain this. No, sir, it's clear, sir. Thank you. Mani, you may, you may add. Uh, yeah, I'm not a good person to comment on this, so <laughs> I want to be very honest in accepting myself and then, you know, uh, not advising on this. <laughs> I don't balance. As simple as that. Yeah. So, so every time when I when I uh, uh, say that you know when somebody from my family calls uh, and says that what time you'll be at home, I usually say I will be uh, there. Fifty. They definitely add uh, one hour or two hours to to that for sure. So that's how life goes. So in, 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 uh, in uh, my personal uh, experience, you know, I have been fortunate enough to have uh, um, very supportive uh, managers all, almost all through my uh, career. So I used to work hard at the same time uh, uh, I used to, uh, uh, you know, uh, work hard in my life as well. Uh, so for me in that perspective more uh, when I'm just... Uh, 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 playing uh, my life part of it, they used to think that this guy does not work. He keeps, uh, you know, uh, you know, doing whatever he is doing, and uh, they used to think that you know he is working a lot. Kind of able to, uh, in most part, balance my work and life better. That's what I said. That the, the situations play a very very important world. It is a very competitive world. It's a question of uh, upbringing. And uh, and what you put as your uh, priority. Thank you, sir. Sir, while addressing, we just avoid stress. Money, do you want to <laughs> take that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I will. See, it's all you know. Again, it is becoming like a gyan, but nevertheless, you know, since your question is also aligned towards that, I got to you know. According to me, there is uh, nothing called if you start enjoying what you do. And what you started doing that repetitively, that itself will be a stress buster to you. <laughs> so it's uh, more of what I, when the question comes of the stress buster is that, uh, you know, once you have a load and uh, and you start enjoying that load, then you will start uh, having it of uh, the work from a work quantity perspective. Next, there is a second dimension attached to that is that the work outcome perspective earlier to the corporate world, you know, especially when you go forward towards the research type of activity that, or for that matter, any other outcome oriented activity, that is always an outcome which can be positive or negative. And more so when the outcome is negative, you get more stressed, you get more stressed, you know. So these are the situations where you get more stressed and then you should know how to Cope up yourself under the stress. You know, there is no life without stress, I tell you. It is the way you see the stress is more important. People would say that, you know, do meditation, do yoga, and all those are, you know, I call it as a supply versus apply. How many of you can apply if I give those <laughs> supplies different? But what I would say philosophically is that, you know, try to embrace whatever you are doing and the outcome can be either way and try to 
practice that you know somewhere i remember you know uh, in case in case of my early part of my life you know uh, i used to find it very difficult to cope up with the failures you know and uh, i used to face lot of challenges even i don't get a sleep i tell you so i used to take a sleeping pill to go to sleep you know uh, that was one part of my career later i felt that you know some very good mentors in my life i thought and told me that you know it is a part of this outcome of this activity the activity outcome can be negative and positive don't get uh, offended or afraid of it and so by that knowledge you know i started embracing that then it becomes so casual and cool for me you know you won't believe just one hour before i completed my work one of my activity is getting lingered in the newspaper for past two days and then we are facing it out without any thing and i slept more than 8 hours yesterday <laughs> so it's all about the way you face it you train yourself to face it rather than working towards a stress busters because it is all the more so both our job demands and activity has got positive and negative outcome so face it don't get uh, be afraid and then don't come into the shell to train yourself to face the thing then you don't need to have any stress busters so that you would start enjoying that in 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 your views what is stress uh, you know whoever has asked that question i don't know what do you understand about stress you know what do you conceive or perceive as stress when you get tense by the activities you know disappointments and everything like that okay disappointments and okay what are the other things such negative things maybe okay okay so you know a simple example in a very simple uh, terms okay so um, just 6 months ago uh, you know we be all in um, in in our uh, uh, even uh, 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 manikandan uh, uh, you know encounter so uh, to put it in a very simple word um, we have to do a clinical trial okay and uh, the cost of that clinical trial uh, is about 1 uh, and 1/2 crores okay that is a decision comes to you that uh, and uh, it it showed the signs of failure earlier so there is a but as a product the management really wants it there is a 50 50 chance that you could repeat the study it may pass or it may fail okay so i have to take the decision okay the management wants to hear from me that they say that if you say yes we will go ahead okay um see the kind of a stress okay the product is developed by me okay if i say no okay my performance is lost because i have not delivered that product yes let us go ahead okay we spend 1 and 1/2 crores uh, rupees early it showed signs of failure so there is a 50 50 chance that it will pass or it will fail okay so now um if it fails then again i don't have the product and over and above uh, the uh, you know the uh, conviction of um, having spent uh, one and a half crores additional so i'm still not having the product it will take another 5 months to 6 months to complete the study there is a time loss um so in this situation what is the stress uh, in your views the pressure from the companies whether the product is good or not you know in any direction you go there is uncertainty basically it is a fear of uncertainty okay so intense activity is a different uh, thing um, uh, because many of the times we work for like 12 hours a day 14 hours a day continuously sometimes you know we used to work like go to the work in the morning and then come back in the next day morning or evening non stop no sleep because we have to do certain activity that stress is totally different because you have to spend time and your energy to do something so i think that that a kind of is an achievable whenever you are tired you come and have a coffee or tea or you know you you just happen to eat something whenever you have uh, you know drink some water go back and all those things but at the same time these 
this kind of uncertainty brings in a certain um, uh, degree of uh, uh, stress. The second thing is the fear of not meeting an expectation. Either your own or somebody else creates another uh, kind of what the feeling is uh, called uh, uh, stress. Okay. So once my daughter told me, um, uh, she's in first grade. Uh, so she told me that, you know, sometimes I happen to feel like crying. You know, something happens in my heart. You know, something happens here in school. But, you know, I keep quiet because if I, if I cry, my friends in school will think that, you know, I'm weak. Okay. So that's a kind of a, a stress uh, we are facing, feeling about stress. So basically, as I said, the intense physical activity or a mental activity is totally different. So when you are not able to meet anybody's expectations, your own or somebody else, a uh, situation where there are multiple outcomes and there is everything is an uncertainty and you have to take a decision and own it that is where it comes as a stress so when you talk about those situations the only best opportunity is to 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 do best of your ability and beyond that don't worry about the outcome okay everybody has a different uh, capability and capacity and don't worry about the outcome. Don't look around that. What will this person do? What will that person um, uh, do? You know, in a, somebody else uh, scored, uh, uh, you know, 30 out of 30 in practicals. I scored 25 out of 30. That also creates a stress. So it, it doesn't really, not that, um, you know, I, I hope whoever is in this call, we are in a kind of a very uh, uh, fortunate situation. We have all the basic necessities of life. We have certain kind of a protection. So stress is not a factor. Um, in Get involved in what you're doing and then don't, uh, you know, uh, succumb to the expectations or uh, don't worry about the outcome. Whatever comes, accept it and have action plan ready. In this way, it happens. I will do this. In this way, if it happens, I will do it. And then move ahead. That that reduces the stress a lot. Like what? Yeah. Yes. Get yourself trained to embrace it if you are not having courage to embrace it. So the next question is like, what is your biggest milestone till date? Yeah, Shankar? For me, there is nothing. Okay. So whatever uh, happens once you, you know, the, the, the basic uh, human behavior and uh, even the expectations in the in the world uh, that we are in once you achieve something it's not the end of it you want to get something more and uh, what next what next what next so until unless something is achieved there is a about that so once it is done okay move on move on next next so it's it's nothing like a biggest milestone or something you would uh, you would say um, it is basically a cost effect it can be, um, you know, uh, whatever you do on an hourly basis or a daily basis, you achieve something, you have to be happy that you have to be happy with that. Uh, that comes with a lot of uh, uh, experience um, and that comes with, uh, uh, you know, a um, lot of uh, philosophical thinking about uh, what happens around. And uh, that comes with a lot of experience on failures. Okay. So, but, you know, I would, I personally don't get into the milestone uh, business. To say that, you know, uh, people say, you know, achievement is a milestone. I don't see uh, that if we are in the job, there is nothing called achievement. We are trying to progress continuously on what we do. So the first milestone would be after completing, I get into the job. I achieved it. My next milestone is that how do I prepare myself to retire? <laughs> so what are the skills that one should develop to go to higher studies or get a placement in industries? So can, can, um, can some of you answer this question yourself? What do you think that should be the skill set required? Maybe uh, get to language speaking like what they speak. English proficiency maybe and then what are the skills like I don't know like others can also answer 
please unmute yourself if you want to answer unmute yourself and answer communication skills we should develop that first i think so sir we should know many languages to communicate with others mm -hmm. we must uh, possess positive attitude okay we should be very fast in our work okay practical skills so we should okay. try to face the situation so it going to be very new environment so we should try to face that boldly mm -hmm. we should have the capacity to manage any kind of situation and we should think uh, according to a problem or uh, the situation and we should be able to take a decision okay now yeah, i think uh, i think all of you yourself answered uh, uh, the question but you know coming um, coming to some of the specific points um, uh, you know um, i i am i am guessing um, you are all must be in your 20 or less than 20 so uh, you know um, with respect to the communication since this, the question was specific to uh, coming to the high studies in the united states um i would say you know um communication wise you, you all uh, sh should should have a, a with a, with respect to the language you all should not have a problem you you are no more in a situation that you know most of you would have uh, studied in so called english medium uh, right from your uh, first grade all through the um, career it's not that you know you you did everything in your Uh, native language in your state and then struggle to um, uh, find the right spelling of anatomy and physiology when you come to the uh, first year uh, b form but uh, uh, so that that you should be okay uh, the the second uh, thing uh, is that you want to do the higher studies uh, there are many types of higher studies uh, in the uh, in the us so if you the the main struggle that used to be in in uh, those days is to how how one will sponsor the the fees uh, nowadays you know there are many universities in the us uh, uh, you know which uh, you pay the fees and uh, they they just take you it is not a, uh, a big deal but when you come to a uh, uh, research based uh, uh, higher studies uh, your post graduations or something like that they require a specific uh, uh, skill set um, so you should definitely have a practical knowledge you should have published uh, some uh, uh, you should have published uh, some papers uh, in that field uh, i won't say that you know you just jump into um, uh, try to do the higher studies in the us uh, right after your uh, b pharmacy maybe just try to do a post graduation in uh, pharmacy and uh, then um, you know in your post graduation go on a more of a practical based approaches uh, do a very good quality research work publish that into um, uh, some reputed uh, journals i mean to say reputed journal in the sense nowadays you, you just pay in, in in india the situation is you just pay 2000 rupees and somebody will publish your paper some very good uh, peer reviewed uh, um, uh, reputed journals you go on to that field and, and you know get some papers published and then try to find um uh, the labs or the universities or a particular research group or or faculty in the us who who are specialized in that research area they may have opportunities for you uh, to uh, go and join them you may in fact lose one and a half two years to first to do a masters over there repeat the masters and then do a phd but that's the way that you uh, uh, proceed with that so basically you have to decide uh, which area you would like to first work and uh, that you have to follow um, uh, with uh, uh, with what you do in your under graduation or post graduation so morning atan sir your views on it yeah i think so uh, Shankar is the more right person to answer that, and I think so. He has comprehensively answered. It. He is practically encountering that. You know, he has been there, and then he knows what it is. Yeah, don't uh, see the the 
the the the kind of a education system uh, that uh, they have de developed uh, here is uh, totally different that what that is what makes uh, it more distinct um, than anything else even even in the united states if you come um, there are uh, all the complaints from everywhere that the education system is not good uh, but still i would say as compared to uh, the education system in india this uh, this education system here it uh, encourages uh, creativity first of all it it lets you be uh, the way you are it doesn't put any uh, kind of undue uh, stress on you um, if you work enough you get everything if you do not you don't get anything that's that's the way uh, it works so it's the same way in india also but the the platform is not set kind of i would say the platform is not set properly in india uh, here uh, that is set in a much uh, better way uh, so skill set i would say that you know just just uh, go deeper and deeper uh, in anything that you uh, take up and uh, try to be more exam oriented uh, thing yes the, the your your scores will definitely play a role when you want to apply for a higher studies in the usa because they need some basis to assess at the same time uh, you know try it, it's not that memorizing something i see um, we used to interview uh, myself and money used to interview a lot of uh, uh, candidates uh, coming out of uh, colleges uh, m farm fresher things like that um they are good uh, if you if you um ask them certain questions uh, they they have memorized it well they can explain but when you give them a kind of a practical scenario they will not be able to apply that knowledge and uh, come up so that that part of it you should you should develop it, it doesn't come with the development if you pay enough attention um and and stop uh, you know going more about uh, the examination oriented uh, then it will be good so what was the most challenging part of your career sir money <laughs> yeah every day is a challenge you know? there is nothing called you know there is no day when you come into the industry that too when you get into the very techno commercial role every day is a challenge actually and we cannot be rank ordering that this was more challenging that was more challenging you know because we have a so where we will be set every year target and then out of the targets always one or the two will be the most challenging you know we could not remember uh, because every year there was a challenge and we try to overcome that and we work on that you know it's nothing of anything one specific to mention that's what i keep saying that get yourself prepared to i keep using often the word embrace the challenges rather than to remembering because every day is a challenge you know we cannot run away and we are uh, we are not like you know one day uh, personal professionals like you know a tennis player or a cricketer nothing like that right so this is a job which we are doing and then the job has got a, a set outcome so almost all the things when you take a complex as the complexity increases the challenge increases linearly and uh, when you have a couple of projects which is of highly complex then every day turns out to be a challenge so we should not see it as a challenge per se should see you should try to do it well okay the next question okay sir any other uh, questions actually i have one last question sir yeah skill sets are expected from the industry perspective from a b firm fresher sir first of the foremost thing uh, do not think you know after completing my b firm i want to get into the job only until unless your dad uh, need of a job you know it is that's what i started in the during the time it is a literacy versus education you know if you have an opportunity and uh, uh, for, what do you say the possibility continue to complete bare minimum of post graduation you know that puts you in a better off and there is nothing called specific skill set which is required if you could do your educational curriculum very well what has been assigned by the universities and the colleges and uh, do that in a true spirit you know do that you know in a, with a better understanding and the deeper insight and then you are there 
even if you want to do after B form. Is, is that answers to your question? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Lakshmi, you would like to add on something you're coming? So, actually, uh, there is a big gap between the academics and industry. So many a times uh, uh, we study uh, so many things as we you have rightly mentioned in the beginning of the session that it's of multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. We study many things, but we are not industry. So these are all the small steps we are trying to bridge the gap, and we are uh, academic and industry. So that is why we have arranged for this interactive session today. Uh, really, we don't know what is happening currently in the pharma industry. So we don't want our uh, students to, after graduation, we don't want our students to go and think of uh, what is what. If you can add on some skill sets, what they should possess, what you are looking for as a fresh graduate when they come out from an academic institution, what are the skill sets you are looking for? So that will uh, be very useful for them. And since they are uh, right in the first year, I think uh, they will uh, they will utilize this opportunity to mold themselves. Actually, speaking that, you know, we don't expect anything other than okay. your good knowledge. Okay. You know, uh, you be thorough in what you are studying as per the college curriculum and, okay. and be on top of it. That's it. Okay. Nothing more. Uh, is required than that actually. People okay. are not ba basically aware of what they are studying in these four years yes. and then they see it always looks like we say that other end looks green pasture like you know we see that there is something in the industry which we should know and uh, we should learn that rather than leaving out the own curriculum. All the okay. things are built on the basics and fundamentals. We need to study those fundamentals and basics in a more uh, detailed manner with the advent of these computers and then in the internet, so you have an access to many of the information which you can yes. always work as a projects and, and try yes. to extend it even after you post it. You real life learning what you're saying can be achieved and uh, not through papers. So, at the stage of papers and theories, if you are more uh, more more than uh, required to reach out to the industry or for that matter any other platform okay thank you sir sir what about your views sir shankar sir um, <clears throat> see um, in a in a slightly different way uh, i would suggest you know um, all the students pay full attention to what what you are doing um, if you are if you are if you are in your college if you are sitting in a classroom it's okay. You may not uh, like that particular, uh, uh, you know, lecturer, professor who is teaching you, um, because you did not go to uh, college for the, for the teacher. You may not like the classroom. You may not like the benches over there. There may be your your dear friend is sitting two benches away, where you know you want to be with uh, that person all the time. But um, you know, keep these things apart. Whatever you do do with a full involvement maybe you would be learning about uh, uh, solubility in the b farm first year uh, believe me after you know you do b farm m farm phd finally you start doing only solubility if you come to pharma industry okay that itself is a is a never ending topic uh, in pharma industry how to you know uh, how to optimize your solubility, how to manipulate the solubility, how to get your solubility, what you add, what you don't add, how to engineer your particle. So the particle size and solubility, that's what I'm saying that, you know, whatever you do, do with the complete involvement. Don't pay a lot of attention to um, uh, details. That's very, very critical uh, 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 when you're uh, you are coming out uh, uh, as graduates, uh, uh, you know, to, to face uh, uh, the real situations. So pay complete attention. At the same time, um, you know, it, it is a kind of a mix uh, for the, for the uh, students as well as uh, for the faculty. Have the, the, the education more a practical uh, oriented uh, uh, education 
So there should not be a kind of you may be having a, um, um, a, a practical session in the afternoon and the theory session in the morning. You know, many of the times I used to face a situation where uh, the, 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 my, my faculty comes and says that, uh, uh, you know, let us do this practical today. Tomorrow we will learn about it. So theory goes after practicals. So it, they both have to have a hand in hand, uh, have more of a practical education, try to apply things in a very, very uh, um, simple way. A lot of money. Again, since I took the example of solubility, if you learn about solubility, you need not uh, bring for it. You take sugar and do the solubility. That's fine. So there are many, way, many ways that you know you towards uh, this thing. And if you say that the particle size reduction increases rate of solubility, bring uh, sugar from the grocery shop and crush it. It's not a problem. But what I'm saying is, uh, uh, you know, the, as as the student play at the same to the same extent what you uh, uh, learn uh, theoretically. That is uh, kind of, uh, I'm not sure whether that kind of a revolution has uh, really come um, or not. When, uh, when myself and uh, uh, Manikandan used to be in our post-directoral analysis, so that, that, that course runs for six months basically. Um, so what uh, the, the professor did it after one or two weeks after into initiation into that semester, uh, he gives some unknown compound in a vial. You remember that money? Yeah. Dr. Chakrabart used yeah, to give. Yeah. It's like in your first year in your organic chemistry, you may be doing a salt. You burn it when it is smoked. It is a aromatic. If it is non, it burns without the smoke. It is an, uh, you know, non-aromatic compound. You do the salt analysis, what you say. Okay. It's a kind of a thing. But what, what he does is that he, he gives you that sample. He says that, you know, you do all the spectral analysis, UV spectrum, IR spectrum, NMR spectrum. There is a central facility where you can go and submit a sample. They will do all the spectrum uh, for you. As you keep learning into your different uh, spectral techniques, you keep looking into your actual data. At the end of the year, you have examination is you have to go and tell the uh, present that what is the structure found so you cannot just fake if uh, you know if, if somebody you know your your friend uh, somewhere somebody said uh, some laboratory attendant said that this is the compound okay so uh, you cannot fake that you have to really present. He will ask questions. What if happens, this proton shifts there, this uh, peak shifts there. You have to answer. So such a level of depth, uh, you know, if you get into in everything that you do. Yes, there is a physical limitation because you are in, a, in, in an undergraduate situation. Um, you have to have a lot of uh, subjects and so many things will come into picture. You cannot say that, you know, I will take care only of a physical pharmacy. I will not get into my mathematics or chemistry or anything like that. But whatever you do, try to go into details to the best of your ability. And then you will definitely excel into um, any. I will add on to that. I hope all of you are having a, a paper and pen with you. Okay. <laughs> so you should note it down you know this is a very simple trick or a technique I would call it but it's also a principle if you have a three things you will definitely succeed when you complete by end of the course what are those three things I will tell you we call it as a HMT technique or MCQ technique okay what does H stands for H stands for hunger to learn Okay, you should have that quest and an hunger to learn. Nobody will come and push you. Then you cannot be a professional on later days. You keep exploring yourself. Have that hunger. Keep reading. Keep reading whenever you get the time uh, on the subject or of the passion of the subject. What it can be even finance. Okay, just keep reading. There is no substitute to that. You know, there is no shortcut to achieve. There is no quick way to earn money or learn things. So first and the fundamental thing is hunger to learn. Next comes, have a mentor with you. 
okay the mentor is a person who we believe who can have a casual chat on the hunger of the subject what you are learning he tells you what it is in a very friendly way we keep education as a stress one so that only we don't go to mentor at all go and have a chat with him talk and walk on the subject hey what's happening that why it is so what is existing and without no objective or purpose but towards some uh, quest what you are having you are clarifying because what i why i say mentor is because he has passed through those pathways so that you don't need to reinvent the wheel at the same time he gives you clarifying questions a uh, clarifying answer to the questions what you have in mind okay third is that create a community of practice of, of the similar interest exchange the knowledge and ideas that will help you a lot or you know so how many of you might be having all of you must be having a whatsapp group you know how many of you are having a whatsapp group on any one of the concepts what you come to the college so that you chat on that you know use the techniques which is available i i am pretty sure not if you are having very good but i believe no one must be having it <laughs> do you have one on dissolution do you have one on solubility as what is saying or anatomy physiology health education so have that create a tribe or a community of practice i call it you know so because these are the three things which i learned a hard way over 20 years you know it's not available in the books so which i feel that you know if you can have these three things embraced or practiced slowly when you come out of your b form you will have at least one or two concepts which is known or you will have one or two ideas where you have to explore for your post graduations you can call it as a hmt technique see hunger to learn mentoring and tribe or if you find it difficult to remember that you can put mcq which you <laughs> which is very well known to all of you you know again m stands for mentoring c stands for community of practice and q stands for quest for learning you know if you achieve this it may again looks too theoretical but you know if you translate this into your practice in your life you will be a very successful professional it can be of any profession whether b form with mba a uh, b form with uh, pharmaceutics uh, m form and then a phd in pharmaceutics or uh, chemistry any for that matter any even artificial intelligence club together all things comes under these three things you know only until unless you don't have these three things practiced in your life you will definitely see a, a great sure of success in the life thank you very much sir so it has been a, a very exhaustive session for one and a half hours and uh, you both have been patiently sharing all your experience from the bottom of your heart i think uh, we all are very fortunate enough to have both of you on our uh, board today uh, i thank both of them for uh, sharing your valuable time and clarifying all their uh, doubts actually these questions are uh, being collected and collated by abhishek and uh, these questions are arised from their own uh, student community only are uh, uh, in first year insights of uh, what are all the things that are to be practiced uh, during their stay in the four years of their college life i think it will be very useful for them and i i i feel uh, we should be associated with you for other uh, four years till they come come out of our uh, college so i hope uh, uh, we will get in touch with you and uh, and help in uh, raising up these children sure so abish take uh, you can thank i'd like to conclude the session by saying thank you for both the resource persons you have got uh, amazing insights in what is pharmacy like um, you have got so many ideas to explore and thank you for the participants who tuned in and until next time it's goodbye and before that i'll uh, Say a special thanks to Lakshmi Ma'am for arranging such a good platform and uh, Chetinad Academy of Research and Education for this platform. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you for your, your time as well and uh, giving us an opportunity. Uh, we wish you all the best. Um, if there are any subsequent questions, you can uh, follow up with us any time. Yeah, thank you. Sir. Yeah, thank you, thank you for uh, bringing us on the board uh, for this, such a wonderful discussion. We also thank that you know. Uh, for the opportunity provided as well as you know we feel that in other way also we had an opportunity to clarify some of the emerging or the budding you know, people in the field you know which one day they will remember to translate not if not immediately 
and uh, thank you lakshmi for the coordinating and also thank i thank shankar also on my request joining in the call uh, he must be in a very busy schedule over there you know he's a time to go to his office as well and uh, thank you you know thank, thank you. you sir thank you thank you so much